I'm Don. Welcome to Church of Making Your Day. Coming this way. It's my beautiful, beautiful black and purple. <laughs> Natasha. Thank you. All right, we're getting into uh, chapter 35 of Numbers. Let's open up in prayer. Father in heaven, again, we come before you so thankful, Lord God. So thankful that you're real. So thankful that you love us. Thank God you're not Satan who would hate us. You love us. You give us life. You give us everything. You maintain our heartbeat. We don't, you do. We thank you for all that you've done for us. Living in a free country, one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. God, don't let us lose that, please. We're losing it. We pray that we don't lose it, Lord God, that we come back to you. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and repent of their sins, I will heal their nation. This nation needs healing, Lord God. As you heal this nation, we all know you heal the world. So please, Lord, have some mercy. Have your kindness, your loving kindness. Bless us, Lord God, as we bless you. We thank you for your word. We just ask you right now to open our minds and our hearts and our souls and our spirits that we might love you and serve you and have an awesome life, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Beautiful. I try. <laughs> All I can do is try. <laughs> <laughs> so important part to understand um, how to live life um, that we would look perfect in the eyes of our Father. Right. So it's interesting in this chapter, um, we probably can start with the very almost last verse where God say, so you shall not pollute the land where you are. Right. It doesn't mean that you have to worry about um, the quality of the air. It doesn't mean you have to worry about... You don't have to become green. <laughs> it doesn't mean that you have to worry about um, other things, right? What it means not to pollute the land where you are? It means the energy that and this land that you have, it should be pure and clean and beautiful because he said, I, I dwell in this land, in the presence of God, there's no pollution should be present. And in this consideration, he's starting this chapter with identifying um, the borders, basically, the borders where uh, children of Israel would live, mm -hmm. right? He also took in consideration Levi's, as you remember, we said previously that Levi's, they do not have their own uh, part in the land of the Canaan. Mm -hmm. They were distributed among the tribes of the children. And if you remember from the previous chapters, uh, that was sort of curse of Jacob on Levi's that turns out to be a blessing in general altogether, right? right. And uh, we're not going to go over this entire uh, things what happened. But you can review, I think, at Genesis uh, somewhere, chapter 34, 54, something like that. <laughs> somewhere around there. But, but the point is, uh, the point is that that, uh, that curse has become blessing of Jacob uh, came, um, came to pass when uh, Levi's did not have their own tribe. Right. right. I mean, they had their own tribe, but right. they didn't have their own location, their own right. land. Right. They didn't get allotted. Like right, the rest of them. where they would live, but they were distributed okay. among other tribes. Right. And um, in this chapter in particular, uh, God talks about what kind of locations um, Levi should live. Right. So um, I just did a little sketch. You can do the sketch yourself. But the idea is that if there is a city in the middle, right. then God asks to extend the corners of the city north, east, south, south, west, etc., every single corner, right? Uh, to the point that it creates basically like a square or rectangle, right? A Dep lot. Dep depends, um, depends how big the city is. And in, in this area where he, point, he, he has certain location, um, 
he created certain area for for uh, for certain purpose. Right. They, because look, because they can go to them here and they can go to them there and they can go to right. them there and they right right. So, so what he decided to do, he decided to keep this area clean with no pollution. And he was talking about accidental um, murders, basically, that occur among the children of Israel. And Not murder. Right. Manslaughter. It's called like a man slayer, but you can think about as a manslaughter. So this is something unintentionally right. um, and intentionally that would be uh, present um, in, in the tribes, right? right. So it's, it's, it's kind of the city, uh, city of refugee. So this way that if a certain murder uh, took place, but it wasn't premeditated murder, so this way people that uh, accidentally basically kill somebody they could go for this areas of the city of refugee all right right refuge refuge so so in this area like we're get, getting back here again for one moment so um, Levi's would live in the corners of this one city and the areas in connection between those cities that would be the area where they would have cattle if you remember the tabernacle is still exist right, right? And Levi's would continue to have burn offerings, one in the morning, one at night, in addition to other burning sin offerings, yeah, etc., etc. Et so Levi's should have some kind of location where would we'll keep that cattle, and that was around, around basically the city in the area. And the bigger the city is, the bigger area yeah, yeah. that Levi's could could have. Right. So uh, back to refugees. So basically. In this particular chapter, um, we're going to uh, God will talk about of um, exchange exchange of the energy. Basically, that's for us to understand, because this refugee people that uh, accidentally basically killed somebody, right. they had to go to this particular cities. There is a six of them were created originally three on the east side of the Jordan and three on the west side of the Jordan. And these people should, as they approach city, to present themselves to the elderly, right? right that, the elders of that city. That's, uh, they've been standing by the gate and tell them what actually happened. Right. And this person was in connection to the city. They'll eventually get a trial, but right. for now they're safe. Right. If they stay in the city, if they come out of the city, they ain't safe anymore. But it's almost like they had a double trial because it's not like they came into the city and they're just like, oh yeah, come on, welcome. No, it wasn't like right. that, right? No, you have to explain yourself to them. They had to explain themselves, but more than that, this um, a person, elderly person from tribe the Levi, he, he was in contact with the person from the city where this, this person came, right. this refugee came, to confirm basically that the mur murder is actually occur there, right. right? And this person coming here and the murder, not murder. is not uh, um, killing, s s slaughter, right? Slaughter, slaughter, right. slaughter actually happened, and it wasn't murder. It wasn't right. premeditated, right. right? So in that case, this person could enter the city of refugee and live there. And apparently it's interesting the timing that the person should stay inside of the city is until the high priest death. Right. So let's say if this person entered the city and the, the high priest died in a year, this person should be in the city in a year. Right. If this person entered the city and the high priest would live another 20 years, then this person should stay in the city for next 20 years. So it's almost like exchange of the energy. And you know, it's it's not easy for us to understand because, I, I mean, I'm sure if we would um, requ request somebody who uh, who is who is let's say quantum physicists and who can explain in terms of the energy how this exchange of the energy of happen of this high priest death right and this um, accidental slaughter manslaughter that happened by this person right. like an atonement right. right. I mean, we would understand better, but we don't have that knowledge. And just because we don't have that knowledge, we just accept as is said in the Bible. So, but again, God present us 
uh, situation where we clearly see the exchange of energy happens. Right? Yeah. So this person, refugee, can stay in the city or must stay, I should say, must stay in the city until the high priest in the city and that city refugee is die. Right. And then he can hey, come back. Pray that he's old and die. Because <laughs> yes. if he's 20 years old, you're going to be there for about 50 yeah. years. And then he can come back uh, with, to the city where he came from. And I know it's confusing, but there is a basically a perfect alignment with um, the manslaughter that happened by this person and the, the death of this high priest, like sort of the atonement for this person's sins. Right. And of course, you know, in the future, in far away future from this point, another 1,500 years, we're going to have Christ that took his life his life was taken, should I say. His life was taken in in the save of all of our sins. Right. Right. But the, the same kind of, if you can see connection and the same kind of parallel and understanding, right, there is exchange of energy happening. And even right. though we're not knowledgeable enough to explain this to this point, how it's exactly happened. But if you, if you can see the parallel and it's obviously there, then you will understand uh, why it's set this way. So now it's interesting that um, when God talk about premeditated murder, he's go going to also show us that the tool of premeditated murder is irrelevant. So another way, is that person killed by stone? Is that person killed by iron? Is that person killed by whoever, whichever? A rock right? on top of his rock head? Of or... If this is a premeditated murder of your unborn baby, as an abortion, that's the tool of the murder. It doesn't matter to God. The point is the murder happened and the punishment for the murder is death in this chapter. Rape and murder or rape and murder. Of course, you death. know, in our case, we have judicial system. We do not have um, this system that was set up at that time. But the point is, that um, it, it's very interesting how God is showing to us that um, it, it's basically the result, what it, what's matter. Right. The person is dead, the person is no longer there, right. and this person was premeditated, um, premeditatedly killed. Right. And because of this, that murderer should be treated as a eye murderer for itself. Eye. eye for an eye. Now, another thing that it says here that um, you also should not give false witnesses. So you will also notice that for a person to be convicted that this person is a murderer, it should be two witnesses that could uh, testify that this person uh, commit the murder. Right. But you would say, well, kind of anybody can do it, right? right. On a way, not anybody, but there are some people maybe. Right. But it's interesting because if these people, if somebody will find out, then they false testify against of this person. Right, that they shall not bear false witness against their neighbor. The punishment for them is death as well. Right. So as you can see, it's a very severe punishment and probably nobody will risk their life just to testify wrongly right. against of someone else. And uh, that pretty much it for this chapter. So it's it's incredible an understanding of exchange of energy that is happening in the land of uh, God that should not be polluted. Right. To keep it clean. Amen. And we start with chapter 35. It's uh, almost one of the last chapters. We have only 36 chapters. And, yep. And um, then on one. into Deuteronomy. That's right. <laughs> Here we go. Verse All one. right. Chapter 35. Numbers. The Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, that's the land they're going into, Jericho, command the children of Israel that they give unto the Levites of the inheritance of their possession cities to dwell in. And ye shall give also unto the Levites suburbs for the cities round about them. I'm just going to stop for a second. I forgot actually to mention. So this area, the shaded area, those are suburbs. 
Right. So this is basically where the cattle are going to be handled. I mean, and now in nowadays we call suburbs as like uh, um, like towns outside of the city, on right? The like edge rural. Of, on the edge of the city, right? Right. But this is just a place for the the cattle to be kept, basically. Right. Cattle, uh, sheep, and and that's basically where those areas are. <clears throat> okay. Two or three. Two. Command the children of Israel that they give yeah, unto the three, Levites. Three, three, hmm? three. Oh, three. All right. We just did that. And the cities shall they have to dwell in, and the suburbs of them shall be for their cattle and for their goods and for all their beasts. And the suburbs of the cities which ye shall give unto Levites shall reach from the wall of the city and outward a thousand cubits round about. What's a cubit? It was according to a king's, right? If you're a big guy, a cubit could be 24 inches. If you're a little guy, cubits could be 18 inches, somewhere around there, more than a foot, less than a yard. And you shall measure from without the city of the east side 2,000 cubits, and on the south side 2,000 cubits, and on the west side 2,000 cubits, and on the north side 2,000 cubits, and then the city shall be in the midst. In the middle. In the mid, yeah, in the middle. This shall be to them the suburb. So we're probably talking 2,000 would be like 3,000 feet, right? And among the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites, there shall be six cities of the Levites for refuge, which ye shall appoint for manslaughter, manslayer, that he may flee thither, he may go there, and to them you shall add forty and two cities. So all the cities which ye shall give to the Levites shall be forty and eight cities. Forty-two for the Levites, six for the uh, for the refuge. Them shall ye give with their suburbs, and the cities, <clears throat> the cities which ye shall give shall be the possession of the children of Israel. From them that have many, ye shall give many. But from them that have few, ye shall give few. Everything's fair. Everyone shall give of his cities unto the Levites according to his inheritance, which he inheriteth. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and saying to them, when ye come over the Jordan into the land of Canaan, into Jericho, into Jerusalem, then ye shall appoint your cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee thither, which killeth any person at unawares, accidental. Mm -hmm. And they shall be unto you cities for refuge from the avenger, that the manslayer die not until he stand before the congregation in judgment. So like Natasha said, first they have to explain to the Levites, which are like judges, right? Holy men of God. They got to explain what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, the axe head fell off. I was chopping mm -hmm. trees with my buddy. The axe head fell off, hit him in the head. Mm -hmm. All his family wants to kill me, right? Mm -hmm. But I didn't, he was my friend. I didn't do it on purpose. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to understand a little bit. So as, as we're taking to keep, keep land out of the pollution of this negative energy, right? Pollution of what? Pollution of negative energy. So these people, um, let, let's say they did not go anywhere, right? Let's say they would not be safe in the certain city of the refugee. What, what would happen? Right? right. Well, number one, they would live in total fear. Right. All the time. Always. Right. Always looking around your back. Number two. Like a drug that, lord. That's a negative energy, right? That would be kept among the children of Israel. Uh, number two, they would be they would have in this tremendous guilt. Right. Right. Because it's it's like unsolved. There, there's no resolution. Right. right. You have this guilt, and you did not go through this. A process where people actually saying you're not guilty right right and um, so for that it's tremendous help to keep these people basically away from children of Israel and not polluted the the land of 
um, where children of Israel live right. uh, by this negative energy right. to keep them away. Right. right? And in addition, uh, apparently that if a relatives, let's say if the person who got killed decides to go after them, they can actually kill them and not to consider to be them they did something wrong. Right. right? So to keep this negativity away from from children of Israel, from this living, and for them to focus on God and life and good thing in life and the right. good energy, right? That was done. And it's kind of interesting because out of everything that possibly could be done in this location, that was the number one thing right. Right, that God was taking care of. So well, okay, now like keep you the said, land okay, clean. Uh, you know, the brother or the father of the mm-hmm. killed person, mm-hmm. he can't go into the city of refuge. Right. After if this guy leaves the city of refuge, mm-hmm. then you can kill him. And right, if they decided or decided not. But to if he's go, in the city of refuge yeah. and he talked to the Levite, right. and the Levite says, "Okay, you're safe there. You're safe there." Mm-hmm. Now, if somebody comes in and kills him, then he's a murderer, right? It, they cannot kill him in the city, but in if city. somebody killed him outside of the city, but it's okay. Then, then, then it's considered. But inside okay. the city, yeah, because yeah. he made a choice, basically, right. that, that person. Instead of protecting himself and... Yeah, uh, he got stupid. Yeah, basically. (laughs) Oops. (laughs) Oops. And uh, 13. What, 13? Mm -hmm. And of these cities, which ye shall give six cities, shall ye have for refuge. Ye shall give three cities on this side of the Jordan, three cities shall ye give in the land of Canaan, which shall be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be a refuge, both for the children of Israel and for the stranger and for the sojourner among them, that every one that killeth any person unawares may flee thither. And you know, I was thinking about, okay, what kind of situations? Mm -hmm. I mean, the only thing I could come up with is the act of name, right? Sounds simple, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, there are other things. I I was watching one of these born again shows about how this guy came to the Lord, right? And he said, uh, well, I was a contractor and I had to go check out, you know, I had my kid for the weekends, right? Divorced. I had my kid for the weekends, four or five year old kid. He's in the, he's in the, um, in the truck. And he says, boy, stay here. I got to go climb some scaffolding, right? And I got to go check the walls, you know, up three stories. Kid didn't listen. Kid came after dad going up the scaffolding. Guess what happened? Mm. Yeah, dead. Drop dead. Mm. What would mom think about that? <laughs> you know, what would mom? I don't want to laugh, but what would mom? What would uh, her father think? What would her brothers think? I'm gonna kill that idiot, mm. right? But he didn't kill his kid. Right. But he didn't think. Mm-hmm. There's another reason to flee to the city of refuge, right? Mm-hmm. To talk it out. To hey. I didn't kill my kid, right. right? So there's all kinds of ways that people can, you know, mm-hmm. can die. Yeah, surprisingly, the cities um, for, for God to create those cities, there are quite a, quite a lot of ev- events like this, right? right? Many events. Nowadays, we just throw them in prison and pay 70000 a month, I mean, a year for <laughs> Charles Manson writing or whatever, you know, those kind of people. But you're right, for people that... It's manslaughter, not murder. Mm-hmm. There should be a place they could go, yeah. right? Well, there was. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of things should be that aren't. Mm-hmm. You shall give three cities. Fourteen. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. You shall give three cities on this side of Jordan, and three cities shall ye give in the land of the Canaan, which shall be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be a refuge both for the children of Israel and for the stranger and for the sojourner among them, that every one that killeth any person unawares may flee thither. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Remember, manslaughter, murder, crimes of passion. You come home, your wife's in bed with somebody, you kill him, right? That's not murder. That's a crime of passion. And they go easier on someone like that, generally. And if he smite him with throwing a stone, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. 
the murderer shall surely be put to death. Or if he smite him with a hand weapon of wood, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Premeditated. You thought about it, like Cain and Abel. The, the revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer, probably the person's father, clo you know, a close relative, shall uh, um, slay the murderer. When he meeteth him, he shall slay him. But if he trusts him, but if, but, but if he thrust him of hatred or hurl at him by laying of weight, that he shall die, premeditated. Or in enmity, smite him with his hand, that he die. He that smote him shall surely be put to death. If you're going to hit somebody, don't hit him too hard. For he is a murderer. The revenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him. But if he thrust him suddenly without enmity, or have cast upon him anything without laying of weight, or with any stone wherewith a man may die, seen him not, and cast it upon him that he die, and was not his enemy, neither sought his harm, then the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to these judgments. So he didn't try to kill him. Mm -hmm. It was an accident. Well, then we got to look at the facts, right? Mm -hmm. And the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the, uh, out of the revenger of blood. And the congregation shall restore him to the city of his refuge, whither he was fled, and he shall abide in it unto the death of the high priest, which was anointed with the holy oil. So it's kind of like, um, it's like a jubilee, mm -hmm. right? But the slayer shall at any time come without the border. Okay, but if the slayer, manslaughter, hey, accident, oops, shall at any time come without the border, of the city of his refuge, whether he was fled and the avenger, the avenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of his refuge and the revenger of blood kill the slayer, he shall not be guilty of blood. He won't, that isn't murder. That's taking care of business because that guy was an idiot for leaving the city because he should have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer shall return unto the land of his possession. And if an uncle or father or somebody kills him, that person's guilty of murder. So these things shall be for a statute of judgment unto you throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Whoso I wonder, killed... I wonder how they announce this. You know, to every, I mean, you need to know that high priest is die, dead, right? <laughs> hey, hey, hallelujah, the high priest died. No, I'm, I'm, I'm free. I'm saying how he gonna <laughs> That's the greatest day of that guy's life. Yeah, but I'm saying how. Everybody else is mourning. <laughs> I'm saying how he gonna announce this to the relatives of the person that he killed, you know. For oh, them right. Well, no, you're taking I, your chances. I honestly do not know how that Yeah, worked. I mean, okay. if someone still has a grudge, you're probably dead. Well, he right? probably. Yeah, he's probably making sure he... But they not, know, not, hey, not they know the rules. They so. probably have some kind of rules and then notify that... that right, that, that of course. Okay, 30. This guy's safe. Mm -hmm. The murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses, but one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die in the presence of two witnesses. The case will be known. Not one. Mm -hmm. Anyone can have an opinion. You need the facts. Moreover, ye shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer, which is guilty of death, but ye shall be surely, uh, or, uh, but he shall surely be put to death. It's, it's interesting actually to know. So no satisfaction, this means no money, right? No any kind of redemption. So let's say somebody will say, yeah, well, I kill your uncle, but here's the money. Here's 10 grand. Right, here's 10 grand. <laughs> we have 10 grand. <laughs> here's 10, here's, here's, uh, what do they call, rubles, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so, 
Shekels. Shekels. He's, he's, the, he's the money, so um, like redemption. No, it doesn't work that way, right? right. Well, the reason why everything was so strict it's like and, a bribe, so, right? and so precise is because um, this, this guilt on that person um, could not be redeemed. Right, this person just needs to be needs to be um, killed, literally. Right? right. So this person have no right to continue living his or her life. But the point is, it's basically um, this person broke ten commandments, right. which is right there. So um, no, shall not the kill. reason the reason for this uh, things to be so strict that the people know that ten commandments. This is a serious laws that you have to um, you have to respect. Now, let's make one thing perfectly clear. Thou shalt not what? Murder. What is murder? Premeditated mm -hmm. murder. Waiting and wait to kill somebody. Well, is that like our um, army and our Navy and our Marines? No. No. Army, Navy, Marines go over to Hamas, go over to China, go wherever they have to go, right? And they kill people. Thank God. Why? To keep our country safe. They're not murderers. They're not baby killers. They're heroes. And don't ever forget it. Somebody breaks into your house. You got a gun? Blow their heads off. Right? Right. That's not murder. That's protecting your family. So there's a lot of Christians who have a lot of goofy thinking. Well, what if somebody broke into your house and is raping your daughter and killing her and then he's going to rape your wife and kill her? What do you do? Praise the Lord. Um, forgive. No. That's not praising the Lord and forgiving. That's being a coward. That's being an insane idiot. Somebody breaks into your house. They got a gun. They're coming after you or yours. You blow them away before they blow you away. Period. And that's that. And that's the way the laws are in most states. Except the super libs. <clears throat> okay. Where are we? 32? 32. Mm -hmm. And ye shall take no satisfaction for him that is fled to the city of his refuge that he should come again to dwell in the land until the death of the priest. So ye shall not pollute the land mm -hmm. wherein ye are. Are we talking about dirty water or dirty, you know, trash? No, we're talking about a spiritual yeah, pollution, a, yeah. right? So this person, you see, you can, uh, you, you, you can take redemption and let this person live among others. Right, right? why? Because he's gonna do it again. That's what they do. No, sir. Right. This, All right, is, what? this is somebody who is in the city of the refugee. Oh, yeah, okay. In the city of refuge, you're okay. You come out. You you're come, not hold okay. on, you know, just, just listen for a second. Okay. So it's saying you should not take the satisfaction, meaning redemption of money, mm -hmm. from somebody who is inside of the city. And let's say the priest is not dying. The high priest is still. Yeah, living. and this guy wants out. Right, this guy wants out, and he's saying to the family, of the killed, like right. uh, I did not mean to kill it. Obviously, I'm a see in the city of refugee. Here's the money. Can I? Can you not kill me, basically? Right. Because I want to go back. You're no. Bribing the, them. The, the answer is no. Right. The answer is no. So the only and most people wouldn't take the money. They the kill. only way this this energy of this um, this immense slaughter that occur by this person is the death of the priest. That's the only time that this person can come back and they live in a land with other children of Israel together. Right. Right? Okay. Praise old. Let, let's read 33 one more time. So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Defile not, therefore, the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein I dwell. For I, the Lord, dwell among the children of Israel. You defy it, you defile it, God curses you. You uh, keep it clean, God blesses you. And again, right? clean, how clean? Energetically clean, right? Right. Defile not, therefore, the land which ye shall inhabit wherein I dwell, right. for I, the Lord, dwell among the children of the Israel at, right. at that time. Right. I wish it would continue. Right. 
but it's not. Well, we have only one chapter left, <laughs> chapter 36, until we finalize oh, the book, book of numbers in the wilderness. So we thank you so very much. Uh, it's it's enormous amount of information that we learn um, that we can implement to our life and live our life with instruction of God, which is most importantly as we getting ready uh, and preparing yourself to enter to the third verse age uh, <laughs> for this everlasting, for eternity. beautiful life and eternity. Can't God. wait. God. The older I get, the more I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the older I get, the better I was. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Amen. Sorry. Amen. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. All right. All right, guys. Next time. Always good. <laughs>